Yeah, I worry about that. And I've been worried about it for years. Um, and let me let me try to put it in even more in even more basic terms. Um, uh, quite a few years ago, there was a movie called War Games, and the opening scene was to me the most chilling scene in the whole uh, uh, movie because it showed uh, the uh, actually it was a mock-up of the control room where the, where the decision had to be reached. Uh, about whether or not to to fire retaliatory uh, nuclear weapons in the case of an enemy strike. So the idea was here: the 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 nuclear warheads are on their way in. Are we going to uh, are we going to fire off our our retaliatory strike? And in the in the movie, uh, there was a fail-safe system. Two people had to turn the key or something, and some of the soldiers wouldn't turn the key. Uh, and the chilling thing was that those soldiers were uh, flushed out of the program. They didn't have the guts to, t to turn the key, so they were deemed uh, incapable. They were, they were disabled for that particular job. Well, look, if you're not really going to let people make a moral decision there, <laughs> there's only one decision that, that, that counts, well, throw out the people altogether and just, just give up on that fantasy and say, all right, our fate is now in the hands of our machines, and, and we're not going to. We're, there's no oversight possible. Now, now that's a chilling idea, and but it's also coming in areas like medicine, where it takes some real courage and maybe foolhardy courage, on the part of a doctor, to overrule the diagnosis, or even the treatment regime proposed by some artificial intelligent uh, uh, analytic machine, and. We are uh, delegating more and more of our difficult decision making to technology. And there are good reasons always to do that because the artificial devices we've made can sift through much, much more information than any human being could ever, could ever digest and do it very fast. But the downside is that uh, we're really uh, cut off then from playing the direct controlling role on some very important matters. Now, how we sort out that issue is, I think, uh, a very important question. And we're only beginning to appreciate uh, how serious that is. Uh, I have tremendous sympathy for uh, an appreciation of those people who, who dimly or, or acutely perceive that the encroaching uh, use of decision-making technology is uh, uh, both threatening and promising to take decisions out of our hands. This, this is a very big change. And this isn't a conscious robot. And if you're worried, you're, you're, you're looking in the wrong place for something ominous. <laughs> uh, if you're looking for, uh, looking, worried about a conscious robot, that's not where the threat lies. Well, um, I think that um, the idea of the singularity is um, it's possible in principle, of course, but I think that the idea that it's in the near future is um, just not plausible. I, I disagree with Kurzweil uh, on that. I think that he hugely underestimates uh, the amount of design work that has to go into the software. Let Moore's law reign triumphant. Let we've got a petaflop machine now, and so yes, we can we can we can perform trillions of floating point operations in a second now. Uh, but we don't know how to harness that power, and it's going to be a long time before we do. I can certainly imagine that. I think that uh, we should look ahead as best we can and see what we can do to steer research and development in benign directions. And I think there are, there are real pitfalls to avoid. 
uh, I think that the uh, um, uh, gene splicing technologies have given us a pretty good example of uh, the sorts of safeguards and controls that we want to include in, in, in that area of research. I think there's room for more of that. I think we do want to worry carefully about the side effects of nanotechnology, uh, for instance. Uh, and yeah, just as, look, we've, we've had some great successes which, which should be more, they should be more dramatized. Um, uh, Sherry Rowland drew the world's attention to the uh, hole in the ozone layer and uh, was so quick and so convincing on this score that changed changed the way we dealt with refrigerants and chlorofluorocarbons. And uh, uh, that was a very important thing that didn't happen. <laughs> uh, uh, crises averted, catastrophes averted are, are are not very exciting in a way, but w we should make the most of them and encourage people to realize that we can, we can avert catastrophes. Mm -hmm.